Hello, this is Kirill from forexboat.com and welcome to this 13th tutorial in our course on algorithmic trading for complete beginners. And today we're starting a new section in our course which is going to be about uh, system design and uh, trading functions, sending orders, um, working with prices and so on. So this is a very exciting part and I'm really glad that you've made it this far. Um, we're going to be delving deeper into the actual forex market and finally start to do some basic algorithmic trading. Um, today, In today's uh, uh, tutorial we're not going to actually code anything right away. Uh, we're going to f uh, focus on um, understanding how systems are designed and uh, what um, what basically goes into the foundation of a programming system uh, or an algorithmic trading system and uh, I think it is an important part and it uh, it illustrates this tutorial will illustrate that um, with any kind of um, algorithmic system development you first have to sit down and understand what you need to what you want to create and sometimes I even recommend writing th these things down on a paper for yourself uh, so that you uh, when you do start coding you understand exactly uh, what the requirements are and what the algorithm will look like uh, because uh, clear requirements will always make your programming um, experience uh, much more pleasurable and uh, seamless and you won't have to stop and rethink uh, things along the way. So uh, here I have a, a euro dollar chart uh, open in front of me and um, uh, pretty lucky that today is actually week the weekend, it's Saturday so the markets are not working and we're going to take advantage of that so the prices are still and we're going to just discuss what would happen, what what uh, we'd want to do uh, if uh, we could trade now but because the markets are still we won't uh, have this problem of the price moving around so we're kind of uh, uh, discussing a freeze frame of the market. Um, uh, this is a, a bar chart and um, I'm just going to change it to a, a line a line graph so that um, it's uh, easier to discuss so there's le less uh, um, clutter on the chart. Um, right now the ask price is uh, 1.3608 for euro dollar and uh, the bid price is 1.3606. Um, so the ask price, uh, I'm, I'm sure you're aware of this but I'll just uh, recap. Um, the ask price is uh, always higher than the bid price and um, basically the ask price is the price that it's the dearer price. So um, if you want to buy uh, euros for uh, dollars you're going to have to do it at the ask price. Uh, so for every um, one euro you're going to have to pay 1.3608 uh, American dollars. And uh, conversely the bid price is always less than ask price, it's the cheaper of the two. So basically um, if, you're want, if you want to sell euros for dollars you're going to get this amount of dollars for every euro um, uh, and the difference between them is called the spread so that basically in, in essence the spread is is what at what disadvantage you are uh, or that the price you pay for c conducting these transactions and that's an important part because um, in uh, our algorithms we're going to have to uh, take into account both the ask and the bid price and understand where to use which one um, so uh, let's see what uh, let's try to understand what kind of uh, system we would uh, possibly want to design. Um, in this particular instance, um, uh, we can't really from from what we see, we can't really tell whether the price is going to go up or it's going to go down. So, um, for argument's sake, let's um, suggest that the price is going to go up. So, what would we need in a uh, algorithmic trading system that is going to buy euros uh, euros against dollars. Because the price is going up we want to buy euros cheap and then when the price goes up we want to sell them. So um, first of all we're going to uh, have to understand how far do we think the price is going to go up by. 
And let's, for example, think, uh, say there's going to be 10 pips uh, that the price is going to increase by. And so basically it will uh, get to the level of uh, 1.3616. And if you notice here, I'm using the bid price. So uh, how this works is if we want to buy euros for dollars, we're going to have to use the ask price to buy them. And um, uh, for every... Uh, for every one euro, we're going to have to pay $1.3608. But then if we want to sell them, we're going to be selling at the bid price. So this gap over here is it's already our disadvantage. It's already what we lose just by initiating this transaction. And uh, therefore, we have to take into account. So if we want to earn 10 pips on the movement, upward movement of euro dollar, we're going to have to uh, base our calculations on the bid price. So the initial transaction will occur at the ask price, but further on, we're going to be dealing with the bid price and we will be um, trying to uh, close the transaction at uh, the bid price. So if we want 10 pips, it's going to be 1.3616. Um, so that's the first part and you'd think that that is the uh, full extent of the trading system, but um, that wouldn't be correct because uh, if um, we also have to take into account um, a possible downward movement and we have to protect our position from um, very high losses. So let's see, uh, what is the maximum uh, that we can afford to lose? Let's say it's also 10 pips. So in that case, we need to um, set a stop loss at uh, bid minus 10 pips, which is one3 three five nine six so as you can see a simple trading system that um, suggests an upward movement uh, has to have uh, certain um, factors built into it it has to open uh, a position at the ask price uh, then it has to have a take profit at the bid price plus 10 pips and has to have a stop light a stop loss uh, at a at the bid price minus 10 pips um, now let's look at a different situation um, where, uh, for example, here on the Euro Canadian dollar, where we see more of the chart and we, we've made some, uh, we can make some, um, and we can do some analysis and then, uh, try to understand uh, the future movements and predict exactly where it's going to move, where the charts, uh, the price is going to move. So here um, I've uh, marked the ask and bid price, and here you can see the difference is uh, a bit higher. It's actually uh, eight pips uh, between the ask and bid, um, and that's because this is not a Euro Canadian dollar is not a major payer. Um, it's a cross. Um, so here uh, we can see um, that there's been a substantial move upward, and uh, the price uh, has reached this level of um, uncertainty around one point four six zero. So it's just crossed it, and um, previous um, experience suggests that sometimes a price can turn around at this level and go backwards. And so that's what we're going to bet on. We're going to suggest, we're going to uh, um, uh, speculate that the price is going to go down from here and uh, is going to reach a certain level and um, we're going to try to capitalize on that. So. Uh, here we can. Here I've identified a level where there was another uncertainty at 1.4545 or somewhere around there, uh, where historically the price has um, experienced um, you know tur turning points or um, some kind of um, uncertainty around where it's going to move. So what we will do is we'll use that level and uh, we'll expect the price to go. Uh, down to that level, but we will exit the position just before the price gets there. Uh, and that will put us on the safe side. So we'll exit the position at the blue line. Um, and then uh, that way we can avoid uh, getting into this, um, uh, getting close to this level where uh, the price may turn around and may not turn around. So exiting at the blue line is uh, being on the safe side. So if we have a sell position, um, uh, which will open here at the bid price, then the take profit we're going to set at um, 1.4555. Uh, 
Um, at the same time, uh, as in the previous example, we need a stop loss. And for sell positions, stop loss goes up to the top. Um, so here we see uh, a level where the price has previously turned around. So um, what we'll do is we will speculate that if the price does go upward against our position, uh, there is a probability that it will actually turn around at the yellow line and then go down like it did over here and um, reach our take profit so we can actually still make money. So in that case, we would uh, want to set the stop loss above the yellow line so uh, we don't lose this opportunity of the price actually turning around. And that says uh, that means that the stop loss would be set at around 1.4645. Um, so in this case, you see that the take profit is around um, 50 pips and uh, the um, stop loss is uh, around 40 pips or basically to be to be more um, correct, we have to be um, working with the ask price. So the take profit is 57 pips, stop loss is um around 33 pips so um to sum up this strategy even though it is similar to the previous one which we discussed here um, these two strategies have different requirements in the first strategy we were um, set, choosing an entry level a level based on the market price and then we were setting the stop loss and take profit uh, take profit and stop loss based on a fixed number of pips, which was 10 pips for both. Uh, in this strategy, um, this approach is different. We are still using the market price to enter, but to exit, we're not using a fixed stop loss or take profit. To exit, we're actually um, using prices, uh, price levels, which we see on the market, and uh, we're moving away a little bit from them. Um, so that means that uh, the algorithmic trading systems will be similar, but uh, will be um, will differ from each other in the sense that the parameters of these systems. Uh, in the first case, it will be the levels or, or the uh, absolute values, uh, the distances of the stop loss and take profit from the market price. But in the second uh, situation, uh, the input parameters will actually be fixed prices which the trader chooses uh, based on his analysis of the current uh, of the currency pair. Um, so that's uh, in a nutshell what algorithmic uh, trading system design is about and of course it gets more complex and more involved and has much more aspects to it uh, but uh, these are the basics and um, I hope you found that helpful and maybe you could um, look at some of uh, the charts um, in your trading platform and try to understand what uh, strategy you would uh, apply as um, in, in each situation. And uh, in the next tutorial, we're going to look at how we can actually turn this logic into code and how we can create scripts will, which will implement this logic for us. And I think you will find the next tutorial very exciting. Um, so, that's uh, uh, it for this tutorial and uh, don't forget to click su subscribe if you're watching on YouTube and I hope you'll consider going to www.forexboat.com and uh, subscribing to my new newsletter there as well. Um, so uh, for now, until next time, happy coding.